So recently, I was going over some past videos, looking for franchises that I haven't covered on the channel so far to try and produce some ideas for future videos. And surprisingly, I've not covered The Legend of Zelda on the channel. Well, that won't do at all, it's time to fix that. Hello everybody and welcome back to The Science of Where today we're going to be taking a look at The Legend of Zelda. Absolutely lovely franchise, loved it for many years, can't wait to get into that. But unfortunately before we do that, I do have a quick announcement. If you want to skip it, little thing in the chapter there, just go and watch the main video, hope you enjoy it. If you do, please remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. But anyway, besides from that, I now have an Instagram, which is lovely, you can find it there, there's an image thing, I can't remember what it's called, link to it. Instagram.com slash ToggleJam, it exists. Over on there, I am doing tiny little fun facts every Sunday, looking at stuff that really wouldn't work for a full science of video. For example, here's one where I covered the real life Pikmin flowers, which I, I was very surprised to find existed. Anyway, so that's the sort of stuff you can expect on the Instagram, as well as editing updates and thumbnail updates. In fact, here's one of me making a little link that I used in this thumbnail and all of that lovely stuff. So if you're interested in that, then please take a look, please follow. And there we go. It'll also help you keep up to date on how the science videos are going because the other announcement is I'm going to be doing a PhD pretty soon. Fingers crossed. I've got an interview. If I don't, then videos will be as normal. But if I get into it, video delays might be a bit more often, but I should still be able to put them out every three weeks or so. But anyway, exciting news out of the way. I've got an Instagram. I might be getting a PhD. Fun times. Besides that, let's have a look at the hookshot. The hookshot is one of those Zelda items that has appeared in every 3D Zelda game in some form since its first appearance in A Link to the Past in 1992. With a similar item called a claw shot appearing in the two Wii Zelda games Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword and basically the same item but with a grabby bit on the end called a grip shot appearing in The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. All of these items function in basically the same way. You point towards a wooden or specifically designed surface and Link will shoot out a long chain towards it, which will then retract, pulling him with it towards his destination. Link can use the hookshot to pull far off enemies towards him and also use it to activate switches in many of the later dungeons in Ocarina of Time. Link can even use the hookshot to kill smaller enemies and stun larger ones when fired correctly. Now, as to whether or not it's scientifically accurate, let's face it, having a giant spike racing towards your head isn't exactly going to result in a massage, so we can assume that it's going to be pretty effective against your average monster. What we're covering today is the science involved in its potential as a transportation tool. First seeing how fast it drags Link around a water temple like a ragdoll, and then seeing how much force is involved and what the result of these forces could be on our poor little elf. In order to figure out what kind of speeds Link is going to be travelling at, we first need to decide what the distance is we're going to measure. For this, we ideally want to use an area where we can extend a hookshot to its fullest, getting the maximum distance possible. For the sake of consistency, all measurements used in this video will use the hookshot and adult Link from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. From there, we can use adult Link's height taken from the Lake Hylia Research Centre to calculate the length of the hookshot. According to the Research Centre's measuring markers, Link's height is roughly 5 foot 2 inches tall, or 1.6 metres. And I cannot exaggerate how rough this measurement is, as these measurement lines are far from the most accurate. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using the entrance of the Forest Temple to calculate the length of the hookshot. This is the first temple you take on after the seven year gap and Ganondorf takes over Hyrule. In order to enter this temple, you need to attach the hookshot retrieved from Kakariko Village to a tree growing out of the crumbling ruins of the temple's entrance. This tree is roughly 4 links or 6.4 meters tall and you can hook onto the branch from 12 paces away. Each pace is equal to just over a fifth of Link's height, so we can say that we're roughly 3.5 meters away from the branch. Now that we have those two distances, all we need to do is use Pythagorean Theorem. In order to find the square of the hypotenuse, we use a squared plus b squared. 6.4 squared plus 3.5 squared equals 53.21. Square root this and we get a chain length of 7.29 meters. Okay, so now we have the maximum distance that the hookshot can reach. What we need to decide on now is how much mass the hookshot has. It's made out of solid metal, so it's definitely going to have a pretty significant mass. In order to figure out the mass of the hookshot, we first need to figure out what metal it's made out of. Given that the hookshot's big brother the longshot is found in the water temple, submerged underwater in the ocean for years, we would assume that it would rust. 
but this means that we're looking at a metal that doesn't oxidize with water. We want to find a metal that's water resistant and strong enough to support dragging Link's weight off the ground. There are many metals that we could work with, starting with stainless steel, but given how easily Link can swing the hookshot around with it not impacting his running speed, it's highly unlikely that Link is using any kind of iron product. In the Ocarina of Time, Link gains the iron boots, which are iron coated leather boots. This cast iron has a high carbon content, roughly 4%, though this varies greatly depending on the exact content of carbon and other impurities, making its density somewhere around 6,800 and 7,800 kilograms per meter cubed. Stainless steel has a much lower carbon content, but contains 10.5% of chromium, which has a significantly higher atomic weight than carbon, 51 compared to carbon's 12. This makes stainless steel much denser than cast iron, having densities that exceed 8,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Given this, it is incredibly unlikely that Link's hookshot is made of any kind of iron product, but there are metals far stronger than steel, whilst also being much lighter. Take titanium for example, which has a density of 4,420 kilograms per meter cubed. Despite its low density, titanium is able to withstand incredibly high temperatures, making it ideal for the fire temple, and has a tensile strength of 434 megapascals, almost 100 megapascals stronger than steel, which has a tensile strength of 350 megapascals. This is important for the hook shot, as tensile strength is the maximum load their material can support when being stretched. So let's say that the hook shot's hook and chain were both made out of titanium. How much could it weigh? For this, we need to figure out both the size of the hook and the individual links of the hookshot's chain. The hook is a rough isosceles triangle, so from there it's easy to get the volume of a triangular prism, which uses this equation. This resulted in a volume similar to that of a human hand surprisingly, around 370 cubed centimetres. Multiplying this by titanium's density of 4.5 kilograms per cubed centimetre results in a mass of 1.66 kilograms. As for the mass of the chain, it depends on a few factors, the diameter of the chain links and how many there are. For this, we can't really use the chain shown in game as it's looking a little flat, so instead let's look at some industry standards used for transporting goods. These have to withstand significant forces, so they should be absolutely fine for transporting Link up a flight of stairs. The size of chains are usually measured in link diameters, and honestly this whole process is a bit of a pain, so instead let's use this chart that measures the size, mass and lengths of different stainless steel chains. Let's take the M12 chain as our example. It is a chain link diameter of 12mm, and a 100m long chain will weigh 268kg. We can divide this by 100 to give us a mass of 2.69kg per meter, meaning a 7.29m long chain would weigh 19.6kg. Now we know the mass of our steel chain, we convert it to titanium using the equation mass equals the mass of the steel multiplied by the density of titanium divided by the density of the steel. This gives us a titanium chain mass of 11.76 kilograms. This, combined with the mass of the hook, leaves us with a total mass of 13.42 kilograms. So now that we've got the mass of the hook shot, we can figure out the force that goes into firing it. For this, we'll be using the equation force equals mass times acceleration. We've got the mass all sorted, now all we need is the acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity per unit of time, so we need to figure out three values. Its initial velocity, well that's easy, that's just zero, and a final velocity, which is how long the hookshot needs to reach its full length, and then the time to go from zero to that final velocity. The hookshot takes 650 milliseconds to reach its full length. Given that speed equals distance divided by time, and we know that the hookshot is extended 7.29 meters, we can calculate that the hookshot travels at 11.21 meters per second. So this is the final velocity for our equation, and it looks like it's pretty constant from the moment that Link fires the hookshot. The time it takes from Link activating the hookshot to the hook being shot out is about 0.03 seconds. Since acceleration is a change in velocity divided by time, we divide our 11.21 meters per second by 0.03 seconds to give us our final acceleration of 373.66 meters per second per second. That's incredible acceleration for this heavy lump of metal to be shot out at, way faster than the fastest production car, and definitely over the speed of sound. And whilst it's not quite as fast as a bullet, which accelerates at three times the speed of sound, it's more than enough to be getting along with. 
So now we have the hook's acceleration and we can put it into our force calculation. Force equals mass, 13.42 kilograms, multiplied by acceleration, 373 meters per second per second, to give the hook shot a firing force of 5,014.52 newtons. So now Link has 5,000 newtons of force directly at his fingertips, but what is it going to do to his enemies? And more importantly, what is it going to do to Link? Because you have to remember that forces occur in both directions. As the hookshot shoots out, over 5,000 newtons of force will be directed back at Link's arm. According to a study conducted on how much force it takes to break specific pieces of the skeleton, it would take just around 4,000 newtons of force to break the strongest bone in the human body, the femur. But it's not just force that's important here. It's not all bad news for Link, as he's holding the hookshot perpendicular to his arm, as you would. Bones tend to be far better at dealing at forces that are perpendicular to the direction of the bone, owing to a dense outer layer consisting of columns of collagen and calcium phosphate, rather than shear or side forces which cause them to break like a twig. But even then, the moment a hookshot reaches its target, it starts to contract, pulling Link with it and leaving him to ragdoll in its wake. In order to calculate the force that's pulling Link, we can use the same equation, but exchanging Link's mass for the mass of the hook and chain. Given that Link is about 5 foot 2 inches, we can estimate his mass to be somewhere between 46 and 59 kilograms. Given that Link is able to move around heavy equipment, let's go on the heavier side of the scale and say that his weight is around 59 kilograms. Putting this mass into our calculation, we find that Link is being pulled by roughly 22,000 newtons of force, force that's being handled by his arm, and given that 5,000 would be enough to break a bone, 22,000 newtons of force is going to be enough to break the rest of them. His arm would almost definitely come out of its socket, but there wouldn't be enough force to do much more than that. But now is the time when we come back to an old classic, G-Force. Experiencing forces multiple times greater than the force of Earth's gravity. If you remember from admittedly quite a few videos by now, the gravitational forces on Earth are equal to acceleration at 9.81 meters per second squared, and that is 1g. When we reach acceleration of 98 meters per second, we reach 10g. And at 169 meters per second, we reach around 20g. But what is 373 meters per second squared? At this point, we're at around 38g. 38 times the gravitational force. This is even greater than the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the Sun, which is around 28g. Humans have been placed under 20g, but have only ever been able to tolerate less than 10 seconds of exposure. And in 1954, John Stapp managed to survive 25g for just over a second. But position and posing is very important when it comes to g-forces, with the human body being able to withstand them far better when they're acting perpendicular to the spine, as was the case with John Stapp, sat in a rocket sled with his spine parallel to the direction he was travelling in. Link isn't so fortunate, with these g-forces acting perpendicular to his spine with his arm being pulled in front of him, and this would likely lead to swelling and bursting of blood vessels located around the brain and eyes, leading to blindness or even death. Incredibly unpleasant, but that's not even the end of it. Given that Link's travelling perpendicular to the g-force, even if he survived, it's more than likely that his vertebrae would become severely damaged, maybe even leaving him unable to walk. So there we go. Not only is the hookshot an incredibly useful part of Link's arsenal, but it might just be the most dangerous weapon he has, not only to Ganondorf, but also to himself. Strong enough to severely damage Link's whole body as he zooms through the air on his way to pick up another gold scuttler. Now this isn't the only interesting article of Link's exhaustive arsenal of tools and weapons from the Legend of Zelda series. His trick arrows from Ocarina of Time, the myriad of examples of advanced technology seen throughout Skyward Sword's fantasy realms, and of course the weather phenomena related to the Wind Waker. I'll definitely have to come back to Hyrule in the future to see more of the science behind this incredible series of games. As always, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any interesting scientific area or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos, and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until then, this has been the Science of the Legend of Zelda. I'll see you next time. <laughs>